This event was sponsored by Spock, the Bootsy Lab for Beautiful Things, PS PDF Kit. With the JavaScript library, you can view and annotate PDF files in the browser. Features include cross-browser support, mobile-optimized UI, and no server-side component. Wild, a digital branding studio, they love GIFs, beer, and weird shit. XXX Lutz, the tech team, XXXL Digital creates all digital experience for XXL Lutz, Mobilix, and Momax all over Europe. Um. How many people have not used GraphQL in a production or a side project? All right, so no surprise from the logbook guy. <laughs> CRDT is the next thing. Uh, cool. So uh, there are some pretty cool things about GraphQL. Uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, something I've been working on. It's very quick. Uh, just basically just a series of demos. Um, what we do, this is uh, called OneGraph. And it's a uh, GraphQL wrapper around public APIs. Very, very simple concept. So I'm going to show you something that's going to kind of blow your minds here. What if, from GraphQL, all right, let's do that. Is, is that good right there? Yeah, we can see? OK, cool. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar uh, with GraphQL, this is not something I built. This is like open source. I, every time I show this demo, people are like, this is amazing. You guys did such a good job on this. Uh, we built the service behind this. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm going to give you a demo. So imagine that from GraphQL, we could actually uh, query, for example, YouTube. So what I'm going to do here is let's say I'm on uh, YouTube and I have the ID of a video. Given the, an ID, I can actually retrieve an ID. It's very impressive. So I'm going to run this. Yeah, and you see, with very, very little delay, I can actually pull that ID right out. Um, and let me give you a caveat real quick. So whenever we wrap an API, uh, we don't really introduce much in terms of abstraction or sugar on top of it. Uh, so we kind of reflect the underlying uh, structure. So that means um, if you were reading their docs, you'd be able to use this system kind of directly. And I say that more as a defense because you're going to see the word snippet everywhere. And that's not us. That's YouTube. Uh, so for example, let's say I want to get the title of this video. It happens to be under a thing called snippet. So I'm going to pull out a title, and I run that. There we go. I'm able to pull out the title of the YouTube video. Similarly, if I wanted to, for example, uh, pull out the comment threads, I can go in here. And I, we take care of, um, just like Peggy said beforehand, uh, pagination is pushed down into the platform. So we take care of pagination and whatnot for you automatically. Uh, you don't need to have any server running. So I'm going to run here. And uh, I'm pulling out the comments. And so let's say I want to pull out the snippet of the comment. I'm going to get the top level comment. Uh, I'm going to pull out the snippet of that top-level comment. <laughs> this is not us. This is YouTube. Uh, if you're working with the rest, this is the same thing. All right, so now I'm up here. And I can say, for example, I want to get the um, author display name. And let's say the original text. So if I run that, imagine I'm building like a YouTube application. And I want to kind of just pull out this kind of information. Uh, so you can see that I'm able to pull out the title of the video and just a list of all of the, um, the top-level comments. And if I wanted to, I could pull out the replies and whatnot from there as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this guy, because we don't need it anymore. And this is where I think it's, it's a little bit more interesting. I can say, for example, get the channel ID that it was uploaded to. And this is kind of where REST would, for example, traditionally end. And you pull this down, and you make another REST call. But probably what you really want to say is, I just want to get that channel. So just tell me about that channel. And give me the snippet of that channel. Uh, and then I pull the title of that. So now I can say that um, I go in here. I pulled out the video information, and I hopped over to the channel, and I pulled out the channel information. Uh, this happens to be the channel of my old boss. The guy is brilliant. He makes fantastically cool videos. Uh, this one is on P versus MP. Uh, and the channel is called Hacker Dashery. Now, this is something that would be slightly more difficult to, for Google to bake into their API. If you go over to the About on that page, you can see that you can link, or list links to other services like Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. So let's say that I wanted to add that into my, my application. I can say, for example, for every Twitter link on this channel, I want to go over to Twitter, and I want to pull out the tweets. And I actually want to pull out maybe the five most recent tweets. And for each of those tweets, I want to get the text. And now we're over in the Twitter API. And the Twitter API itself, again, we don't introduce many abstractions. Uh, the Twitter API itself has an idea of entities. So this would be like links, um, hashtags, or user mentions. So what I'm going to say is, for each of those tweets, give me the entities that exist in it. 
and I want to know the user mentions. So anyone who is mentioned in that tweet. And then from there, I want to say, all right, give me their screen name, and also I want to get their timeline. Get just the five most recent tweets from them. Now, importantly, like where we've gone from YouTube to a channel, over to Twitter, to those mentions. And of course, what you want to do at this point is say, if any of those people have tweeted about YouTube, what we want to do is say, so I get the tweets, and uh, for any of the videos, I want to get the snippet of that and get the title of that. <laughs> so we run that, and then there we go. This is literally, we've just traversed all the way back and forth through those APIs, and we can build our API on top of that. Now that's a fun one, and for those of you, I actually got so sad um, giving this demo, and, and people were like, "This graphical, this is really nice." Like this, this actual, this other tool. So I thought, all right, I, I actually have some ideas around that. We maybe can work on it a little bit. So uh, I got really excited about this idea of like exploring APIs should be significantly easier than it is right now. Uh, one of the big problems is every API is kind of snowflake. It's unique, right? Like it's so special in how it does authentication, or it puts parameters in the body, or in, in maybe the, the URL. Uh, and like what we want to do is just, just unify that. Like I just want a uniform way of accessing this. And in fact, if you unify it, then it means you can build really cool tooling on top of it. For example, let's say I want to go in here and uh, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can read it. Uh, this is a tree. So maybe exploring API should be as simple as, for example, exploring your uh, file system, right? So we don't actually have to Google how to open up each individual folder, right? Not every folder, like, you have to double click on it here on this one, but you have to hit Control Enter on this one. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is say I want to go into Gmail, and I want to pull out some threads. Uh, I'm going to pull out some threads. Again, this is how their API is. Uh, I'm going to pull out some expanded stuff here. Uh, for each of those ex uh, expanded ones, I'm going to pull out the messages. Uh, I want to pull the payload and headers, name, and value. So I'm going to run this. And this pulls out quite a bit of data, so it might take a little bit. Uh, but this if it succeeds, uh, will actually have been the easiest that anyone has ever written a Google Gmail query. There we go. All right, cool. So this literally goes in here, and this is enough for us to build an inbox uh, application right here. This includes all of, this is my real email. Uh, <laughs> uh, this includes, for example, all the, um, so in the headers and the value in the key, uh, that includes things like subject and from and to and whatnot. So this is literally with this, with no server, if we were just wanted to focus on the front end application, this is enough. We can actually write this and, and uh, interrogate our data. So uh, fun thing is we actually build this on top of Google Compute. Um, we have a number of server servers running. So I'm going to run this. Uh, we wrap all of the Google APIs. In this case, I'm going to list all of our instances that are running. And in this case, we have uh, one server that's long lived. We use this for like SSHing into and whatnot. Um, and then we have down here a more kind of um, traditional continuous deployment server. So every time we push, a ser that server is destroyed and a new one is, is brought up. Um, so what I'm going to do here, we also have mutations. So for example, if I want to create an instance, I can click on this, and I see the uh, arguments actually required to create an instance on Google Compute. So I'm going to say React Vienna Demo. I'm going to run this. And I immediately get back the results of this operation. And I created that in uh, zone A. So I'm going to run that. And I see that it's staging right now. So it's booting up. And now it's running. And I've configured this uh, GraphQL query enough so that it actually gives me the IP of that machine. And we'll make that bigger. Is that big enough? OK. All right, and there we go. We literally just created a new instance in Google Compute Cloud without reading any of the docs. You could literally just click your way through there and create a new instance, and I SSH into it. Sorry? Oh, all of it, yeah. Google Cloud was all me, yeah. <laughs> no, no, we, we just wrap it. It's just a thin wrapper. Um, but to be honest, uh, we probably won't make great use of this specific server. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and say that uh, I want to run another mutation where I'll go ahead and delete it. So I run that mutation. I get just the ID back in that case. And I'm going to go ahead and list it, and I see it's terminated. So this is kind of predicated on this idea that there's a ton of interesting data out there. So like in Salesforce and in Amazon and Gmail, 
But getting to that data is extremely difficult. It takes a lot of effort. Like just to stand up a server to do an OAuth dance takes like a lot of effort. Uh, and then once you get that OAuth token, now you get to start reading the docs about how do you make your specific uh, calls to them and whatnot. And so what we want to do is actually make it so that someone who is maybe just a front-end developer who doesn't want to stand up a server to do an OAuth dance and whatnot can literally just use this and start uh, building real applications, like doing cool stuff. Like, for example, making a dashboard of like, make me a new computer, uh, destroy this computer. Um, similarly, similarly, we run all of our DNS off of Google. So we wrap them so you can see um, all of our DNS records that we use for OneGraph. And this is important to me personally because I have never used a DNS um, management UI that I liked. Uh, I really want someone to make a nice UI. And now, like, and that's not something like a front end designer developer is really excited about most of the time. And I'm not going to go and learn, for example, Namecheap's um, or GoDaddy's API specifically just to write my own API for that. But in this case, this totally abstracts the underlying thing where you're like, all right, to do a uh, Google DNS query is this, and a mutation is this, Namecheap is this and this. And it's basically the same, like, because it's so uniform, you can present that, you can make a nice UI on top of it. You don't have to worry about the underlying kind of implementation so much. All right, this one, this one I'm, I'm, I'm quite proud of. Uh, I didn't come up with it, but I'm quite proud of it. Um, all right, so let me show you real quick what it looks like if you were building a um, integration, if you were building something on top of this. What does it look like to actually get permission, um, like the OAuth token? So it's a one-line link. Uh, in this case, it's a little React component. Um, so I'm going to log into my Google here. And you're going to see something that's fun. Let me, uh, I don't have my phone. Give me a second. No idea what kind of danger I'm in now that I've exposed all of this. All right, cool. All right, so now, um, right now, this app that I, I'm building is not verified. And so you're going to see this very scary screen. This app is not verified. And Google is kind of paranoid. It literally wants you to say, are you sure? Like, type continue. Because, because my app, uh, the way I integrate with everything, wants access to lots and lots and lots of data. So I'm going to go ahead and allow that. And now I can say, for example, I want to query about me query about Google and my email, and OK, I'm logged in using that. And the reason I show you that is because uh, we also wrap the Google Spreadsheets API. Right? Oftentimes, you, like, you just want to dump something in the spreadsheet. Um, and what I want to do is make it so that that's accessible to lots of people, but I don't want to give them access to, for example, my Gmail or to all the other crazy stuff you just saw there. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mutation um, called Submit User. And it's parameterized by an email and a name, which are both required. Um, and what it's going to do is just append those to a spreadsheet. But what I've done is I've locked down the ID of that spreadsheet. So it's not something that, like, they can't go in and tweak this. What I want to do is I actually want to just lock it down so these are the only two things that you can put into this uh, so that I know that they can't just hijack my authentication and start spamming all of my different um, uh, spreadsheets. And what I'm going to do is uh, pull this up. There we go. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> so, someone ruined my, my demo. All right. <laughs> no, no. That, that was good. Just uh, we have to work better next time. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do is uh, run this mutation where I type in name. We'll say React Vienna and email. And I'm going to run this mutation. And it goes in and updates kind of immediately, right? And again, what I, can, what I can do now is actually literally save this, um, this query. So I can go in here and actually, I'll show you one more quick, where I can query the values that are in that as well, right? So you can read and write to it. If I come in here and say manually entered, and I run that query again, uh, I can see that the, the values are there. So if I'm building some sort of dashboard or whatever, pull that in really easily. Now, <clears throat> we actually use this ourselves. So this uh, is our unlaunched home page. And what I wanted to be able to do is uh, save that query. So I'll show you a quick YouTube real quick of what that looks like. I'm going to speed this up. I drank a lot of water. All right. All right, cool. So I'm running that query. 
in the value out, manually entering it. And what I'm going to do now is going to be kind of ugly. Just imagine that this, instead of all this, it was hitting save. Right? This is before I had a save button. So what I did there, one graph is actually built on one graph. So we have a mutation called one graph save query. And so what I'm doing here, um, I'll zoom in. Oh, that's, that, is, that is nice. <laughs> all right. But effectively what I do there, I'm just saying, all right, I want to save this query. It's enabled. Um, it has some tags, and it has a name. What I want to do is come in here and just paste in that body of the query that I just showed you. And whenever I run that, I get that ID back. So now I have the ID, and I'm going to make this bigger in a second here. And literally from curl, I've gone in, and I've just made a post to that endpoint using that ID. And now whenever I go back, I can submit it from there. Or from JavaScript, anywhere using cores, I can just do a simple fetch, and I can actually interact with that Google Docs spreadsheet. So now, like, uh, the reason that's interesting, is, and the reason why someone jumped the gun, uh, is that was amazing. Yes, that was. I actually paid him. To, I actually paid him to do that. Uh, so now, if I come in here and I type this in, this is literally running this code right here. So let me show you um, header. There we go. So this is literally the JavaScript function you need to now append to a Google spreadsheet. We're given the ID of that uh, query or that mutation. And then all we care about really is uh, name, email, and date. Right? Oftentimes whenever you're, like, you're thinking your problem domain, you're like, OK, I want to store people's emails and names and maybe the date that they signed up of some sort. Um, I want to put that somewhere. I'll put it in the spreadsheet. And then you are immediately required to drop out of your domain. You're like, OK, APIs. All right, here we go. I need to do like authentication and like how do I do this with the server and whatnot. And really we'll just kind of simplify this to this is all you care about to just use this. Um, similarly, like we have a slightly different query down here uh, that takes four parameters, but it's the same idea. Cool. Um, another fun one would be Lambda. Uh, how many of you guys have used Lambda? Oh, I was expected more. It's a pretty cool service. Um, but let's say, for example, you had this very simple requirement. What you want to do is just say, I want to pull out the functions that are running in there, and I just want to get, say, the last five minutes of logs for each of these functions. Right? That's actually like, a bit of work with AWS. And so uh, for a friend, we are like, oh, I, I hear you're suffering. He wanted to actually build this, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and so for Nick, we actually reached out and was like, hey, um, what we can do is we can actually wrap this for you. And so now. Like using that tree technique we show, you literally just click your way through, and you can say, uh, I want to go into AWS and into Lambda, pull out all the functions. For each of those, I want to pull out their name and all of the log events. And if I run this, this is literally uh, a significant amount of time to, to do with it. AWS has four different kinds of APIs, right? They have uh, JSON REST, XML REST, EC2, and just another one for fun. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and like I, whenever I was first using it, I just thought, oh, it must be JSON. And actually, it's XML. And I thought, okay, okay, that's fine. It's, it's XML. But then I use this other API, and it's JSON. So like, you know where you, you usually put in like a um, accept or content type, and you expect the server to kind of receive it and deal with it? They do the opposite. They're like, no, no, no. We use different kinds of APIs everywhere, and we expect you to adapt to us. <laughs> um, but not, not here. So we just wrapped it. And so now, and the cool thing is, um, Again, like with no um, server, so you can write, you know, this is kind of targeting initially, our, our first users end up being backend users. Um, but our goal is really to kind of target maybe Firebase kind of people who, for example, who just don't want to stand up a server, but they still want to get access to all this, this data. And so we have like a little fiddle, um, like a JavaScript fiddle with React and whatnot. And so this is running that. Um, and all I've done here, I don't have the, the code to show you, I, I broke it uh, right before this demo. Um, but what it's doing is it's about 100 lines of React. It runs that query uh, that I just showed you. It pulls it in, and it just renders it in line. And it's not pretty, but you could imagine giving this to someone who can make pretty things, not like me, um, who can then take that and say, all right, I know how I want to display this information now that you've given it to me, right? or you've, give, you've given me a way to access it. And the cool thing is that, um, that fiddle then has an ID that you can give to someone else, and they can fork it, and they can you know, change it. So now suddenly, if you're like, oh, I want like a recipe for quickly pulling out all of my Google spreadsheet values or my AWS, whatever, right? Now you can basically go and find some existing recipe 
uh, and you just change it and tweak it from a working version to the one that you want. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, uh, maybe one, one last thing is we also do things like uh, uploading files. And this is in particular because we dog food it um, when we were first beginning. And this is a mutation for Google Cloud Storage. Um, Google's APIs are much more consistent than AWS. Uh, and they force you to do everything correctly, which sounds nice, but is also a bit of a pain. Uh, you need to like encrypt everything and sign everything and, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, so whenever we were first getting started, uh, we had continuous integration. So we would push. And then we thought, all right, now that, like this thing builds and it passes. The back end is all in reason, by the way. Um, so like if it compiles, it compiles. Yeah, that's, that's basically all the, the guarantees you get. Um, but um, it, it compiled. And we wanted to get it onto our server. And so initially what we did was literally just SCP it because we were reading through the Google storage docs, thinking, all right, this would be no big deal. And we spent about a couple of hours trying to figure out how do we get it uploaded to Google Cloud Storage. And we're like, ah, we'll just SCP it. No, it's fine. It's fine for right now. Um, and then we, uh, so finally I sat down, I wrapped the Cloud Storage. And now what that looks like is this, where at the end of CircleCI, uh, whenever we build the next version of OneGraph, we have a compiled binary artifact. And all I want to do is put this on Google Cloud Storage without installing like a dozen different tools. And so I just use curl, and I literally just make a post. And, you know, I hit save earlier on this mutation right here. And so I have the query ID and my auth token. And I just say that uh, the file name is right here. And I pass in the GraphQL variables. And this is all it takes for me to, like, even as someone who doesn't know about GraphQL, I can consume this backend. Um, it's kind of like taking a super powerful, flexible API and making Legos out of it. I don't want all of that flexibility. I just want to be able to specify the file name and the bucket. That's it. Or in fact, maybe not even the bucket. I just want to be able to specify the file name. And so I can take that uh, powerful API and pare it down very, very quickly to just what I want. Um, yeah, I think that's it uh, with five minutes to spare. All right. Cool.